Hello to my first Lutheran family. This is Pastor Phil Vickers. I uh, wanted to say thank you to all of uh, you who have uh, been praying and uh, thinking about us during our family's brush with uh, COVID. I'm feeling great. Kids are feeling great. Uh, Cheryl still has some lingering symptoms, but she's doing a lot better as well. So thank you all for your thoughts, prayers, and concerns in this time. I've used the last couple of days of quarantine to brush up on some reading, and in particular some Emerson, Ralph Waldo Emerson, one of my favorite uh, writers uh, that, uh, of a theological or spiritual nature. Not Lutheran, uh, not even particularly uh, classically Christian in that his ideas sort of went beyond that, and yet has a lot of insights for us. Um, he's particularly embraced in the Unitarian Universalist movement, uh, which of course embraces Christian tenets, uh, but also uh, is open to other uh, spiritual religious traditions. Um, in his Divinity School address, which interestingly enough got him banned from Harvard for 30 years, so that's, that's an interesting aside, uh, just because of its uh, highly progressive nature. The conservatives at Harvard uh, weren't ready for his ideas at the time, but nowadays especially, they, they're very enlightening. Anyway, in that address and in his other writings, he has a couple of thoughts that really make a lot of sense to me and I think would make a lot of difference for us. Um, the first is, and he points these out as what he calls the pitfalls of classical Christianity. The, the, and for him, mod the modern church had fallen into those errors. And of course, for him, the modern church was, you know, mid-1830s. But uh, some of the same things are still true today. Uh, one of the things he says is that we tend to fall into the trap of speaking of God's action as only being in the past. So we get together and we rehearse these stories of what God did through Abraham, God did through Moses, God did through the prophets, God did through Jesus, God did through Paul and the early church. And uh, we don't allow that to teach us what it is supposed to teach us, which that this God is so powerful that he enters into the human story and it does miraculous things. We're not meant to just say, oh, how amazing it is that God did those things way back then. We're to say, look at this God who still is with us, who is still capable of doing these things, and open our eyes to say, you know, what is God doing among us right now that we can participate in? So the rehearsal of these stories isn't meant to be some sort of antiquated, like, museum thing of, like, hey, oh, look how interesting and how wonderful it was that God did these things long ago. It's meant to be inspiring for the present, to say, wow, this God is still with us, so, uh, you know, what can we participate in that God is up to? Another pitfall, and this is really what got Emerson into trouble, uh, because <clears throat> he really looks at Jesus as this figure uh, who he believes <clears throat> Jesus' teaching was about the divinity that's present in every, in every man, every human. Now, I'm not going to fiddle around with the details, and I want to emphasize what I believe is true about what Emerson said, because we do talk about God's indwelling spirit <clears throat> within us. The Holy Spirit comes to dwell with us in baptism. Uh, so God lives within us. We also talk about being made in the image of God. So all those things are very Lutheran, very classically Christian things to say that still can emphasize this point that Emerson was making, which is that uh, we shouldn't relegate God's actions only to a handful of special persons. So Jesus, Mother Teresa, you know, the Pope, whoever you want to think of as a holy person in whom God is active, uh, it's a trap and a pitfall to only believe that God is working in their lives and not in the lives of everyday people uh, like us. Um, if, if that were true, then religion would almost be, um, I don't know, depressing. Because, you, you, you know, you look back in the past and you say, oh, how nice is it that God did that then? You look at other people and say, oh, how wonderful it is that God has come to do that in their life. And we're left out. Uh, we, don't, we don't experience God in our lives in the here and the now, which is really what Emerson is urging people to do. Uh, I think those are both extremely valid points, um, you know, notwithstanding uh, language surrounding Jesus' divinity, and of course we believe that he is the only Son of God. Um, that, that being said, Jesus is with us, the Holy Spirit is with us, and so we should expect God to be at work in our lives, right now, right here today. Uh, it might not look the same as what Moses did or Jesus did, and it's not a competition, uh, my holiness and righteousness isn't something I'm supposed to look at and compare to yours because our journeys are different. Um, and yet, uh, we're all made uh, individually, uh, uniquely with our own individual and unique callings that we can uh, embrace or fight against. And uh, so I think that's the, that's the lesson I got from the this last... I get a little something different every time I read it, but that was the one I got this time. Uh, embrace 
that God is active now today, not just in the past, and not just in special superheroes of the faith that you might hold up, but in your life uh, to do what you are uniquely called to do. Thanks for listening. I hope that school is starting back off for all of our young families well. Uh, God bless you and your children and all the work that you have to do this week. Thank you for allowing me to serve as your pastor. I hope to see you real soon. Thanks.